In this Monday's Asia Rising segment, I visited Seattle, Washington in the great Pacific Northwest to learn about Starbucks. The U.S. coffee company is percolating with plans to expand throughout Asia. Here in America's cradle of caffeine, Starbucks is brewing a hot plan for its biggest expansion ever. Of course, this is a little piece of cloisonne from uh, China. Howard Bahar is in charge of making Starbucks a household product around the world. You just have to look at one number. And that number is that 82% of all the coffee consumed in the world is consumed outside of North America. Seattle is America's capital of coffee, and Starbucks wants to become the global ruler. Modeling itself after Coca-Cola, Starbucks wants to brew its product into a global icon, especially in Asia. I flat top. Here in Thailand, Starbucks already has six stores. Six more are due by year's end. One trend watcher says the growth shows Thailand becoming more global. In Thailand, uh, we've seen a lot of international designers come in, fashion designers, makeup, everything, and it's just the next trend. It's a, it's a cultural thing. One cup of coffee can cost four times the price of lunch on the streets of Bangkok. Customers pay not just for a cup of iced mocha, but for a place to gather. I come here because I want to make an appointment with my friend. Starbucks targets young people, projecting the image that coffee is cool. Well, it certainly probably uh, tilts younger, you know, that 18 to 45-year-old people that are willing to try new things. Starbucks won't say how much it's making in Asia, but it plans to expand to 500 stores by 2003. Right now, it has 150 stores. Of those, half are in Japan, which is the fourth largest consumer of coffee. The others in Singapore, Malaysia, Thailand, the Philippines, New Zealand, and just this year, the first ones in South Korea and China. China, I think, in the future uh, is going to be a big consumer of coffee. To enter the China market, Starbucks hired a Beijing native. He once worked for the Chinese Trade Ministry. Now he's a vice president at Starbucks. Starbucks timing in Asia is fortunate. It is expanding only after the worst of the crisis was over. If it's bad now, we can hardly wait till it gets good because our business has been great throughout Asia Pacific. But in the long run, some analysts question whether enough Asians will choose a cup of joe over a traditional cup of tea. And will profit margins be diluted if Starbucks lowers its prices to win new Asian customers? Clearly, um, I don't think they're going to be able to price the products in the same way over that they do here. But Starbucks has loyal customers who get hooked. 10% in the U.S. come in twice a day. And with long lines of Asians ordering tall grandes, Starbucks says it's ready to turn Asia's recovery into a pot of gold. Starbucks brewing, the subject of our Asia Rising every Monday. More Asia Business Morning after this.